This is Fountain Pendulum. The video I have prepared for you today is about chromatography. So this is a follow-up video which I purpose to make and here it is. So basically I wanted to explore chromatography with fountain pen inks, testing three accessible ways to do chromatography. The most accessible being using a paper towel, a number four coffee filter, and finally chromatography strips which are readily available on Amazon and I'm sure other places also. So the reason you would want to do some chromatography of your fountain pen inks is to better understand your fountain pen inks. Chromatography will break down the color and tonality that lies within the mixture of your ink. And so by doing this, you can better understand the inks you really like and what they're composed of, the hues, the tones that lie within them and the colors. And shimmer will also be visible on chromatography, however sheen, not really. So that's some of the reasons that you would want to explore chromatography with your fountain pen inks. Let me know in the comments below why you do fountain pen chromatography. And if you do it on occasion or if you do it for all your inks that you document. So here are my findings that I am happy to share with you. So let's start with the paper towels. Paper towels are very absorbent and so it's not the most desirable to use, but it is the most accessible. So when I say wet, I mean you dip your ink in uh, with your dip nib or your fountain pen, whatever writing instrument you're using, I wouldn't recommend a brush. You draw a line across it and then this bottom part gets submerged into water, not touching the ink. We're going to do this together in a minute. I just want to find show you the findings to start with. So that's what I mean by wet. Dry is you draw the line, you let it dry, and then you submerge the bottom into water. So the wet version got very wet and it spreads to a longer piece. So I don't find this ideal. Um, and not to mention there's like plies to paper towels. So the plies come apart. It's kind of messy. It takes a long time to dry, but it can be done. So it's an option. If you're going to go with paper towels, the dry worked better. You write your line, you let it dry, submerge it in water, then everything spreads more compactly. So that's my preference, but perhaps you prefer the other. Next would be coffee filters. Now, if you're a coffee drinker, you may already have these number four coffee filters. Why these are preferred is they are a more substantial fabric compared to some of the other coffee filters and they don't have all those frilly ridges that are on some of the other coffee filters also. So I just trim it down and cut it into strips. I'll show you the size of strip I use um, when we get to the hands-on portion. So that's what it looks like and if you have them, use them. I would say if you don't have them, then in the price points, you'd probably just be better off just buying the chromatography strips. That's my opinion. So this is how the coffee filter um, number four turned out. Again, this is on wet and this is on dry. Um, I have a little bit of trouble, trouble deciding which one turned out better. I like that this is a tighter result from the dry but it also looks a little bit more muddy versus like the wet turned out a little bit more vibrant, I would say. So I think that would be my preference. And then finally, chrom chromatography strips. And if you're wanting to try out chromatography, um, but you're not sure that you're going to be want to be doing this for every ink you have, maybe you have a fountain pen friend like I did that can provide you with just a handful of these to try them out. I really wanted to try them out to compare them before I committed to buying like a whole pack. And I'm not sure that I want to do chromatography for all my inks. I'm mostly just kind of interested in dabbling with it. 
So thank you to Simone for providing me with some chromatography strips. Much appreciated. So this is chromatography with the wet ink. This is dry and a quick dip in the water. This turned out very muddy. I wouldn't recommend that. If you do it dry, you have to do the immersion slow. So for that reason, I don't recommend it because I literally sat there for like a whole minute with this submerged in water versus this tiss takes seconds. So overall, the findings would be that the best uh, result, in my opinion, would be using chromatography strips with wet ink. So that's, um, I also tried out some other things, like here's paper towel. We probably all have kind of wiped off some excess ink and then seen chromatography happen on our, on our paper towel to the side. And so I dabbled with that a bit, but nothing uh, was as uh, clear as when you do it in a more purposeful method. So don't recommend that. I also tried it on some um, water paper, uh, wa watercolor paper. Um, and you get like chromatography effects in the sense of like you can see that pinkish orange coming out. You can see some green. But it, again, the findings are just not as profound as these. And so I really don't think it's um, in the running for a proper chromatography testing. But I did try those out. So the ink that I used for this chromatography um, testing is Ferris Wheel Press, Writing Desk. It's an exclusive with Wonder Pens. Um, I have the swatch here to show you. And um, it's a medium brown with a green sheen. I find that deep colors with some interesting properties usually give the most entertaining chromatography and that's why I selected this. It's I recently acquired it and I, I was curious to see what was happening in there. So now that I've showed you, I'm just going to go ahead and do the best of each option with you. So that would be the dry for the paper towel and then wet for both the coffee filter and the chromatography strips. The other thing to be very mindful is um, these materials. So here I have chromatography strips. They come in this width just longer and I just cut them down. Paper towel, cut that down. And I cut this a little differently so I can easily identify which was which. This was the coffee filter. So here's the thing. The paper towel is the most absorbent. Big channels. So water travels easily. Next most absorbent would be the coffee filter. And it's the thicker of the coffee filters being the number four, but it's still not very thick. And then you'll see with the chromatography strips, this is more tightly woven and a more substantial fabric or paper. And so that's why I believe it works the best. So being mindful of these textures, you need to be careful how much water you expose each of them to. This one, very quick dip because a little bit will go a long way, moderate and then needing a little bit more time. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'll be using my Sailor Dipped In Hokuro Fure uh, dip nib for this. You can use anything, but again, just be mindful, like especially if you're using a Kakamori nib, dip nib, not to oversaturate it, um, because then you will not have a very um, consistent result. So here we're just going to make a line a bit up from the edge going across, just like that. And this one we want to dry. So I'll just set this aside and give it quite a bit of time to dry. In the meantime, we'll work with the next. This is the number four coffee filter. So I'll give my dip another dip of ink and we'll go right across. And this we want to do wet. So let's go ahead and just do a little quick dip. 
and then another one. You kind of want to work your way there. See, that's I find that that's usually enough. See how quickly it spreads because of the texture of the paper and its absorption. And I think I'll give it one more dip. Now I'll just let it do its thing. So I have here just some washi paper and I'll just, you can do two things. You can either lay this flat on a pencil board or you can put this somewhere to dry. I'll put it somewhere to dry. Um, let's use all the inky fingers here. Now we have the chromatography strip. So again, I'll get a fresh dip on my dip pen. This one will be doing wet too. So I'll do my line. And this being less absorbent paper, see I can leave it here to continuously just absorb the water until I start getting enough movement. And what you just want to be careful of and mindful of is not to let the ink touch the water level because that affects how the chromatography turns out. The ink will end up like leaching into the water. So that is pretty good. And I'll just let that run now. So likewise, you can leave it on a pencil board until it finishes or use a little washi or something to pin it up and I'll show you those when they're done. Now coming back to my paper toweled one, it's now dry and I accelerated its drying by fanning it around a bit. So this you need to be the most cautious with, just a quick dip and not too deep. And I'll do that again. There we go. And I'll just leave that to travel. All right, here are my results. They're almost dry, but not, not all the way. So here we have the paper towel. We have the coffee filter. And we have, finally, the chromatography strip. So definitely the chromatography strip, I think, brings the most clarity. Um, and it kind of divides those colors out the best. But use whichever works best for you in your circumstances. So those are the results. And what I usually do, this is one that I have completely dry is I usually swatch my cards on the coloring swatch system. So I'll then go ahead and get my chromatography and glue it to the back, where I also document when I got the ink and what form it came in. So if a bottle, how big is the bottle? And if it's a sample, I'll write that also. So there you have it, Ferris Bill Press, and Wonder Pens bring the exclusive ink writing desk and its chromatography strip. I'll thank you so much for watching and give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Let me know if you do chromatography and how you do yours and what you enjoy about it. It's all up to you now. I'll see you on the next one.